legacy. Those two events have geared my message. So I would like to do this message uh, in 30 minutes. And so may the Lord help us. All right. I call it maintaining right focus, the seed of honor. Uh, like we read in Mark chapter 6, verse 4 to, to 5. I'd like to welcome as well our viewer online as well. You know, this is a very special Sunday for us, and our hearts are so moved. So if you are mothers and you have children, yeah, it's the legacy of faith from baby dedication to elderly celebration. Jesus said to them, a prophet is not without honor except in his hometown and among his own relatives and in his own household. And he could do no miracle there except that he lay his hand on a few sick people and healed them. And we need to understand why we should honor elders, honor our mothers, honor our fathers, Honor the authorities of God, honors our governmental leaders, the police, the fire people, firefighters, and our teachers. All these authorities delegated according to Romans chapter 13. I would like to draw your attention on the importance of honor by giving you a clue of what is the seed of dishonor. If you want to understand honor, you need to understand dishonor. The seed of dishonor controls the flow of release of God's favor and blessing on one's life. In other words, if you honor or if you dishonor, it will dictate how much favor will be on your life. Jesus Christ couldn't do great miracles. The Bible says it couldn't. It didn't say it wouldn't. Jesus wanted to do miracles. Jesus has the capacity to do miracles. He was anointed to do the miracles, and he wanted to do it. But the seed of dishonor is so powerful that it controlled the flow of favor. Eden through the life of our Lord and Savior. I will repeat. Jesus wanted to do miracle. Jesus had the capacity to do miracles. But he couldn't. And the only reason he couldn't was not because of his unwillingness, but because of the seed of dishonor. The people in his own home and his own village, in other words, the children in the house, control the flow of favor and blessing. That's how powerful the seed of dishonor is. A life that is void of honor is a life that is void of favor. And a life that is void of favor, it's a life of frustration, hardship, and labor, and always end up bad at the end. Many children today, they are not making it. Many children today are dying premature, before their time. Frustrations has become the label. And sometimes we will cast out demons. But most cases, we cannot neglect the seed of dishonor that a child will sow against his mother or his father, regardless how wrong they've done to you. It will frustrate your life. The word honor means to value, to respect, to look up to, 
to submit, to admire, to appreciate. Do not relate to your fathers and mothers because of their behavior towards you. Because today, you know more than they knew. And today, you have more than they had. It is the Hebrew word kabod. It means to give weight to. You need to give weight to the word of your fathers. Do not despise their word. Give weight to it. Even if it doesn't have weight, give weight to it. I will repeat that. Even if it doesn't have weight, give weight to it. Recognize and acknowledge the weight given to one. God gave them weight. You have no business to de-weight it or to remove the weight. The position as fathers and mothers qualify them before God to have authority and weight. And if you de-weight it or you remove the weight, it's dishonor. The word should not be easily dismissed. The seed of dishonor has unestimable consequences. Unestimable. You cannot estimate it. Let me give you a couple of examples in the Bible. Let's start with Absalom. Second Samuel. 1818, this verse woke me up. Every time I read it, I, 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 I had the fear of God invade me. Now Absalom, in his lifetime, had taken and set up for himself a pillar, which is in the king's valley, for he said. You see what will follow? I have no son to preserve my name. So he named the pillar after his own name. And it is called... Absalom monument to this day. The name Absalom means the peace of my father. His father named him believing that he will bring peace to him. He was the firstborn, therefore qualified for the birthright that the inheritance of double portion. The Bible says he has long hair and hair speak of glory and strength. He has a great covering in his destiny. He has shoulders taller than his peers. The shoulders speak of government. This kid was set up to rule. He was born with governmental authority. This kid was born to be a light to his generation. He was born to be a strength to his nation. He was born to do greater than his father, David. His covering was stronger than David's covering. But Absalom dishonored his father David by sleeping with his incubators or concubines. Watch me. The seed of dishonor will keep you from naming a son. I will explain. It doesn't mean you won't have children. The seed of dishonor will prevent you. It will keep you from naming a son. In other words, dishonor will make your children without name. Doesn't mean you will not have children. It just means the existence and the inexistence will be equal. They will not shine in the generation. They will fade and have no name. They will leave no mark. In this earth. Absalom slept with his concubine. The concubine of his father. Thousands of them. But he was not able to pregnant even one. He finished sonless. As if he should have never lived. A man who was born to be greater king than David who has shoulders higher 
a governmental authority more powerful than the one of his father, yet he finished without any descendant. He had to build a monument to remember his name that the seed of dishonor. Let me give you a second example. Reuben. Genesis 49, 3, 4. I want to let you know. Right now it may be going through your head. Yeah, but my dad, you know what, is, is just a jerk. You know what, my mom, you know, whatever, they were never there. I'm from an alcoholic family. It's violent every day at home. They beat me up and crush me. The reason the way I am, if da, 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 da. it is true. It may have been so. But today, God has met you. And God can turn out what was meant to be evil to become good and amazing. You need to understand you are exposed to much more than your parents were exposed to. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my might. Come on, can you imagine? Now, let me give you the setup of this thing. Here is Jacob. Is about not to bless his children. Forty years before that, Reuben the firstborn slept with the wives of his father. Now, when you read the Bible, you need to see the principle and the message that are embedded in it. Today, you may not have gone and slept with your mother or whatever your, your dad had, but it means simply you insult him publicly. You spit in his face. You despise him. You look down on him. You criticize him. You belittle him. You're ashamed of him. You don't want to relate to him. When they say your nose looks like him, ah, no, I look like my mother. That's what it means. You're ashamed even of your name that you bear. You've been so wounded and hurt, you don't want to have anything to do with your father. As the equivalent of sleeping with the concubines. You belittle him to such a way, pech, none, zero. Speak to him, you raise your voice, you crush him. Because you fight back, you want to avenge yourself. If you do not stop, you used to be the victim. Very soon, your father and mother will become the victim. Once you did that, I want you to see the power of the seed of dishonor. The guy messed up and dishonored his father and played around 40 years ago. So every day and every year that passed by is the firstborn. <laughs> Praise the Lord, I'm so blessed. I am the firstborn of this family. I'm taking over the legacy of my parents. Glory to God. This business, I'm going to run it. This church, I'm going to run it. This investment, hi, it's mine. Everything that he has accumulated or done in his life, this is mine. You understand? He knows there's nobody else who can take over this. It is right. It is right as a firstborn. He grew up 20 years later. He's still believing that. Dad is growing older. He's feeling that dad is going soon. Praise the Lord. Dad is going soon. Watch this. When dad was about to go 40 years later, he called all his children. And it's the setup now. Dad is beginning to speak the blessing. And it started with Reuben. Reuben is happy. He feels like today is my day. You little brother and sister who used to mess me up, I'm taking over this family today. You're all going to bow to me. You will see pay time is here. You understand? He's in, he dressed differently that day because he knows the glory has come to him. And then the father said, Reuben, yeah, Papa, I'm here. See the seed of dishonor. You are my firstborn. Uh-huh, I told you. Look at that. Now he's thinking about the double portion because that is right. And he continues, he said, my might. Do you see his destiny? That's what the anointing and the grace that was set aside for this man. Firstborn, double portion. Might. You are the first son of my strength. Strength. Excelling in honor. Honor. All this is the package that was supposed to be this one. And power. So, firstborn, double portion. Might. Strength, honor, and power. All this is excelling. Then he put a dot and he turned and he said, Turbulent as the waters, you will no longer excel. Now, watch this. The seed of dishonor takes his time, it doesn't hurry.
Forty years, the harvest came. He thought time will deal with it. He even forgot the ill that he did against his mom and dad. Forty years, he feel like, yeah, this is old story. But the seed of dishonor was growing, waiting for the opportune moment to hit. Forty years later, when was the time for you to be crowned? You were despised and ridiculized. His colorful destiny has never seen the day. Listen to me. Even your greatest success that sometimes children can rely on, you know, I'm still okay, you know, I'm doing well, da, 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 da. God said, your greatest vibe of success, they have, they are a settlement for less. In other words, you could have been greater than this. What do you think you are achieving right now by sowing dishonor? And you feel like, yeah, but I still have a job and I'm an engineer. I still do my thing. God said, that is a cheap bargain. You think you're somebody, but compared to what you were supposed to engage in, this is like peanuts. And yet you're excited beating your, your chest. Dishonor demoted him 40 years after he sold it. Look at the life of Reuben. No prince come from Reuben's family. No priest came from Reuben's family. No king came from Reuben's family. No ruler came from Reuben's family. No judge came from Reuben's family. No prophet came from Reuben's family. The only one that the Bible remember from the womb of Reuben was Dothan and Abidam who rebelled against Moses and they were buried alive. That's his descendant. Be careful the way you talk against your parents. Be careful the way you talk against your pastors, your leaders. Be careful the way you talk against your teachers. Be careful the way you talk against your governmental leaders. Dishonor is dishonor. And it will never show you that it's dishonor until the harvest is ripe. David cut a piece of the robe of King Saul. Cut the rope. Just that. Do you see how far we've gone? He didn't have the Holy Ghost living in him. But he cut a rope and the guy felt guilty. Today we chew people to pieces and we feel good. This is wrong. No fear of God. We despise authorities. We raise ourselves to their level. That's why many children today are struggling. And many people in this earth are struggling. When David grew old, he was cold. They covered him with a garment, and no garment was able to warm him up, to warm him up, because he cut the garment of somebody. He cut the heat out of his own garment. I will not stop on such a deep note. I would like to uplift your spirit too. And let's talk about the seed of honor. I will use one person. It's called Jabez. First Chronicle chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother named him Jabez, saying, Because I bore him with pain. Oh my goodness. He has a reason to really get mad at his mama. 
You see what I'm saying? You're not alone. You, you, have, you have probably have some reason to get mad at your parents. Look at that. Because I bought him in pain, I call him Jabez. Now Jabez called on God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you will bless me indeed and enlarge my border, and that your hand might be with me, and that you will keep me from harm, that it may not pain me. Don't let me live up to the name my mom gave me. And God granted him what he requested. Jabed against all that, all the things that was not working for him, he excelled in honor. The Bible says he was more honorable. In other words, the brothers of Jabed were honorable, but Jabez excelled them in honor. And that is the mandate I want to give to everyone under the sound of my voice and those watching. Don't just honor. Excel in honor. I will repeat that. All the brothers of Jabez were honorable. That's why the Bible says Jabez was more honorable. You know, we can pray this prayer and declare it and establish it. But at the end of the day, it begins with one thing. Jabez was more honorable. Jabez was more honorable. Then he prayed. You can insult your parent and then pray. Oh, that you may enlarge my borders. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Jabez was more. Somebody say more. more. Say it again. More. Say it again. More, more honorable. Not just honorable, more honorable. God is calling his children to excel in honor. Toward their fathers and mothers and elderly and authorities. Excelling in honor. Be the best honor displayer in your generation. So first the seed of honor, then you pray. He demonstrated honor where, legitimately speaking, there was no reason to be honorable. That's why the seed of honor will enlarge your territory, not your prayer. The seed of honor will enlarge your borders and secure your coasts. Don't waste. I'll give you this story and I'm close with it. Honor is the seed that is due to fathers to secure access to your prophetic destiny. Honor will take you further than being a genius or hardworking. Okay, I will say it again. Honor will take you further than being a genius or hardworking. I'm closing, and many of you have heard me give this story. I was raised by my grandmother. She was my father figure, my mama figure, and every figure that I've ever known. My upbringing was a very rough and tough one. Poverty was the common denominator. And in the place where everybody is poor, there is still an hierarchy of poverty, just for you to know, for you who don't know what is poverty. There are still in the realm of poverty, some who are really poor. So in the realm of poverty, we were at the bottom of it. You can go lower than that. So when time comes to eat, you need to decide if you're going to get your cassava leaves in the morning or at 12 or in the evening. Once. And I told you, take the evening one instead. At least you can sleep. I tried the morning, didn't work. I tried 12 o'clock. So by experience, it's better to eat so you can sleep because when you eat in the morning and your stomach is angry, it begins to complain back to you the whole night. <laughs> we were so poor, we didn't have shoes. In fact, 
It took a long time for me to recognize or to know a right foot from a left foot. You're laughing, but it's true. It was a mystery. I feel like, how did they know which shoe is left and which one is right? You see how smart your pastor is? He was so smart that he couldn't tell how to recognize the right foot on the shoe on the left foot. Somebody said, God have mercy. He really did. He really did. <laughs> My wife, thank you for coping with me. One day, we were going to play soccer in the city for the first time ever. And my grandmother went and borrowed some money and bought me some, we call that flip-flops. You know where you put your, your toes like that in that thing? Some of you use that only when you go to the beach. You know what I'm saying? As were, I was wearing those ones for the first time, and I look at my little bull leg like that. Wow, look at the way I'm walking with my sandals. And, and they told me, this is right, this is left. They told you, but they don't explain the science. So I will put my, my feet, and I spend most of my time looking at my feet walking. Because it was like, wow, you're wearing a sandal. Whoa, glory. You understand? And then when I will remove my shoes, and people know this guy doesn't know what is right or left, somebody will come and shop them around. And then I come and put my feet in, and I was like, what are you doing? This is the wrong foot. I said, what do you mean is the right? No way. I said, okay, okay, okay. And I couldn't help. I couldn't ask anybody, can you explain me the science? Because you want to show that you know also. You know what I'm saying? So one of those days, I wear these shoes two days, and then we went to this city in the north of the Ivory Coast to play soccer. And then after we finished, we're going back. They say, wow, there is a dam, a bridge where they do electricity. Wow, it's a mystery. Electricity? We've never seen Electricity. So we went there, they said, remove the shoes because it can be slippery. So everybody removed the shoes. I removed my sandals and then we went. When I was coming back, I left the sandal, I forgot. So I went in the, in the pickup of the Catholic priest and I was the youngest, so I fell asleep. I was asleep, I was so tired. But in my sleep, I'm moving my toes like that to see if I still have my shoes on. <laughs> and I was not feeling, I just screamed, ah, my shoes! We were three hours away. Then one day, my grandmother, she will cook and not have enough. She will go cut grass in the back of the hut and lie to us that she just came from the market. I was the youngest. She was not my real mother by blood, but I see her. And I never said a word to his rebellious children who were giving her such a hard time. She, they would say, I don't want to eat that. And she will run to go beg rice because they didn't want to eat ugali. Some of you cook ugali for me when I visit you. And you're like, yeah, you know, you, you don't know about it. I tell you, I can give you all the texture and the characteristic of a ugali. I mean, I, I know ugali even when the grasshoppers and the cockroaches go in it. And I know ugali when it wasted for one week until it becomes so soft you can put your finger inside. I know it. Take me to the restaurant, not Ugali. <laughs> I eat that 365 days every day. Anyway, let me go back here. And they will give her a hard time, and she will go back this, and she will go back, and she will cry and diminish herself in front of the neighbors to get rice for these children. I didn't like what she cooked, but I will force myself and eat it, and I will walk to her and say, Mama, thank you. She could only give us what she had, and I was young. One day, the time comes, she gathered all her children, including me. She said, I want to bless you, and I'll give you my inheritance. They feel like, inheritance? You have nothing. We're in the village here. What money? Inheritance, no money. And she looked at this one and said, you, you will be a drunkard all the days of your life. She cursed them all. Till it get on me, and she called me and said, this is my son. You will go to the white people country and you will be a leader among them. She has no money, no visa to give me. She knew nobody to connect me. She was illiterate. No food to eat in the backyard of the village. But yet she spoke a blessing because of the seed of honor. I receive an inheritance. And her word, even though she was not born again in those days, 
open up the heaven. God honor what she spoke even from the mouth of an unbeliever because his principles never change. And heaven begin to move. And here I am standing here, 30 years in this country, making a difference for Jesus, raising up a family because of the word of a mother. That is the power of the seed of honor. Don't mock your parent. Don't despise them. Don't insult them. She cook grass, eat it, because you know she can only give you what she has. Stand up on your feet. This is so dear to my heart. That's the way I live my life. For the word of grandma, I came to Canada. And I met my dad. Who was not poor. A professor at McGill. At Yukwa. Brilliant man. He loved me. My dad gave me money and I sent to my grandmother. And she took the money to buy a bed for the first time. Because we used to sleep on the floor. And the floor was not leveled. So if one pee on the top, it always add up different flows. And I was the one in the bottom, it end up on me. Even if I didn't pee, I had pee even from my head. So I decided to buy a bed for my grandmother. And she bought a bed. And she asked me, is this is your money? Did you start working, my son? I said, no. It's my dad's money. And she said, I won't die. I will wait for you until you can send me your own money. I suffered my life. I know what it is to suffer. I sent her again more money. This time, mom put running water at home. So you don't need to go to the back of the village. She says, is that your money? I say, no, it's not my money. Until I got my first job. Then I moved to Calgary in 1996. And I got an income on my name. And I sent money to my mom. And she said to me, is that your money? I say, yeah said, can you buy underwear for yourself? Because we grew up, we didn't know what it is. It was a treasure and a privilege and a high achievement to have a kid with an underwear. I said, yeah. He said, can you go buy food at the market? I said, I have a fridge. And I can put food inside. And just said to me, Is your father still give you money? I say, No. I don't need this money. I have my own money. And she said to me, Now I can die. Oh. Ten days later, my grandmother passed away. She had a mission. To push me to destiny. Your parent may not have what it takes that you think you need. But give them a chance. Out of the little they have. To contribute to your life with just one word. Down on the road it will be your difference maker. That will make a difference. Don't despise the elderly. 
Let's pray. Father, legacy of faith. Vessels that you have chosen. Door broken in so many ways. Yet you didn't make a mistake to place us in those families under these mother, father, leader, authorities. You didn't make a mistake. You didn't make a mistake for me. And you didn't make a mistake for anyone who's hearing the word that you speak to them today. A lot has to realign and begin to see the beauty, the effort, small as it may be, to remember their good acts. Not to punish them. Not to make them pay for it. We ask you to forgive us. When we have brought dishonor, when we have sown the seed of dishonor, when we have disrespected, mocked, despised, belittled, crushed, made the life of our parents difficult, adding to the guilt that they have grown living with, adding to the misery that they have been growing with. Forgive us. They gave us life and they did what they could do. I ask you today that every seed of dishonor may be destroyed from our lives. Every seed of dishonor. No matter when it was sowed, how it was so. Let it be cursed and never come alive. Let it be destroyed never to produce or reproduce any harvest. Let we remember our parents, even those who passed away. <laughs> Let we celebrate them, even those who passed away. Let we be grateful. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. I would like you this morning to just take time and give a hug to somebody. If you have your mom and dad that's still alive, give them a call. If not, go sit home with your children and tell them a story about your dad. Tell them a story about your mother, even if they're not around. And if they're around, do it too. Give them a good story. Tell them a good story. Tell them. May the Lord bless you. We're done for today. We're done. Make sure you hug our elderly and our fathers.